Mr. All right. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Audit Committee to order. Uh, first item on our agenda was citizens participation. I understand we have none. We'll move on to review and approve the minutes of the prior meeting of January the 8th. Those were sent out via uh, email. Is there a motion to approve as presented? So moved. Second. All right, motion. I'll second. And a second. All right, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 We will move on to receive ethics point reports. Mr. Hayden. All right. Chairman Sanders, members of the audit committee, Dr. Knoll, good morning. Good morning it is my pleasure to Can everyone see the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes. My, my pleasure to give you the updated update for internal audit. Um, the first slide is our ethics point. As we can see, we had three, they're all closed. Um, any questions on those? No. Okay. We'll move on to the 1920 um, internal audit plan. A uh, couple changes. We have moved payroll to fall of 2020. Uh, in talking with Darren, we felt that internal audit could add more value by beginning to do some construction audits. Um, so we, we've chosen these two audits to begin with. Now, we will be using Weaver to help us with this. But the good news is, is after these two are done, we will have that institutional knowledge in internal audit, and that'll save us money down the road uh, because we'll be able to do these on our own. Uh, the, all the activity fund audits are completed for the year. Um, so we're going to do uh, three follow-ups. Uh, instead of five, just because we feel like, again, our value is best added to the construction audits. Any questions on that? So we'll need to vote to approve the ethics point report and the change in the audit plan, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Are, you, are we ready for that? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there a motion? To accept the ethics point report and to make to approve the changes for the audit plan for 19 2019-2020. I move to accept the report. Second Datron William. Mr. Inman motion yes. and William seconded. That's correct. All right. Any discussion? All right. If not, all in favor, aye. Aye. All right. And opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. We'll move Believe on. That. Okay. Uh, again, these are all the activity funds that we completed for the year. So you can see we've been active and we, we got a good sample of the schools out there. Um, again, going forward, we're going to do less of these and concentrate more on the, the high value, high risk audits. All right. So the first um, report that uh, we can discuss is the consulting engagement that we did where we looked at the construction manager at risk versus the competitive seal proposal for elementary schools. Um, currently, Conroe ISD does not use the CSP method. Um, all of our peer districts do. And in talking to Mickey Morris, of the 20 uh, districts she represents, we are the only one that doesn't use it. So uh, internal audit's recommendation is that the board, the full board approve using the CSP method. And that one of the four new elementary schools that we're gonna build on the bond be designated as a CSP pilot. I mean, let's see if we can actually save money using this. Any discussion? 
I'm just curious, I guess, for Dr. Knoll, if uh, Mr. Foster has given much input on that idea. Yeah, so I think that it'll be, um, certainly this is internal audit recommendation, and we, we certainly bring, bring that to the board to recommend a full discussion. Um, it does not come without concerns from our planning and construction department. I, you know, I do think that they, they do feel like that they are efficient in their current method. Um, so yes, Mr. Foster does have concerns. Um, and I don't know, Darren, do you want to speak to that maybe a little more? Yeah, in our, in our, in the, in the audit plan and in the process that, that Brian went through, we, we sat down with easy, uh, we talked about his concerns. Um, and, 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 and like Dr. Mull said, there, there are some concerns, but you know, when you look at the, 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 the evidence that we gathered as far as um, the benefits of a CSP, and, and really as we're looking at a CSP, my argument's gonna be, uh, Katie uses CSP for all of their new build, buildings. Um, By Fair uses it for the majority of their new builds. You know, the, the, you know, and the savings, if you look at our examples in the report, can be substantial, you know, up to, up to 5%. And so when you're looking at a thirty million dollar project, that you know that that add you know that that adds a lot of value uh, in those. Um, there are some concerns, um, like we said, we're recommending just one of the elementary schools as a pilot, um, and you know we can address those, you know, with, with Mr. Foster, and, and it might not be a, you know, it, it might not work out in this current bond referendum, but we'll work and we'll find the proper project to, to use this method if, if the board approves. And I don't know that today is a, a day for uh, the full debate since we don't have all board members, but certainly want to answer the questions that you have. And I believe we have Mr. Foster on the call and Sarah is going to move him now into the, uh, into the call. That way he can, you can ask him directly rather than, you know, have us, um, you know, answer for him. So Mr. Foster, are you, are you present now? I am present. Yes. Okay. Great. So, um, Mr. Sanders, he's present now. I don't know if, if you if you or any other members had questions that you wanted to ask directly to him, but he's there now as well. I, I do. Um, this is this is Dayton. Um, Mr. Foster, question from from me is what what's the major difference? Uh, forgive my ignorance in this uh, matter, but construction manager versus a, com a competitive seal. So what's the major difference there? What What's driving the, the uh, efficiencies that are expect, or we're, we're expecting from a conceal? Well, and, and like I think Dr. Noll hit the nail on the head, this isn't probably the time to have a full-fledged uh, conversation about it because it's not a simple answer. Uh, well, the, well, well, let me stop you there. We're going to have the same discussion at the uh, next board meeting? We don't have an item set. I mean, at some point, we'll need to have this this bigger discussion. It's somebody will need we'll need to put it on the agenda before we bring you know forward. We've already done the junior high or the elementary in Conroe, correct, Mr. Foster? So we have two schools left in this current bond that would come forward: an elementary school in Grand Oaks and then an elementary school in Caney Creek down the road. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct, and I mean we're we're still seeking land for both of those. So we don't have those locations where we could begin a design yet. Okay, so get it. What what what's the major difference here? Well, I mean to to boil it down in because it's simplest terms, uh, CSP is a, a bid. It's a lump sum agreement where a contractor gives you a price, you agree to it. If you drew it uh, and you intended it to be done that way, it we will get built that way. Uh, if it wasn't drawn uh, and you need it, you get to have a change order to get it done. The CMA risk delivery method is more of a contractor partnership where we have a, uh, I can not necessarily be as detailed on the drawings and specifications and still come out with the desired outcome without coming back to the board for change orders. I think I get it. I want to give you more, more flexibility. One, one of the reasons, Mr. Williams, if I may, uh, uh, with the competitive sealed proposal, the reason that we would recommend, you know, if, if we get to that, that point, 
uh, one of the elementary schools is because this is probably the 20 something iteration of the same elementary that we built. So we're pretty good at building that, that particular elementary school. So for a CSP, uh, you know, it would, it would fall, you know, right in line with we've built it, we've designed it, you know, our architects have, have designed it, our engineers, uh, you know, have worked with that same exact design. So it would mitigate some of those, uh, you know, some of those factors that a CMAR uh, doesn't take into account. Understood. Thanks, Scott. So e easy, if I could just ask a clarifying question, just um, the, the, on your end, the pluses of a CMAR would be a little more flexibility, um, the less change orders on the back end. Um, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the things we're, I mean, we're, we're hoping uh, a CSP will deliver us uh, first cost savings. Uh, and what we've been pretty consistent in delivering at the end of our projects is final cost savings. So it's really shifting the money back into our bank account or, or potentially shifting it earlier in the process. Uh, we would get more flexibility with the current method uh, and not, you know, I mean, basically puts the risk on the contractor, not on the school district. And to be, to be clear, I think your preference is the CM at risk, but if the board chooses to go sealed competitive proposal, you can, you can build us a great school, correct? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm confident that we would not let either program fail. Uh, just one uh, we believe is more efficient than the other. Uh, mm -hmm. And our staff is set up to run on the CMA risk program. Uh, I, I have one other question. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Foster. Have you ever built one with this concealed competitive, this competitive seal? Uh, for Conroe ISD, one of our elementary schools, we have not. Uh, okay. But as a as a contractor, I have been successful uh, with school districts building uh, CSP schools. So, so my understanding of what we're proposing is a pilot here for one school. I don't, I don't see any harm in that. Well, I mean, and, and there's the the fun part about this is it's it's always your, you're the board's prerogative. The state uh, has the CSP as the default method in their in the government code. Uh, our board policy uh, a few years ago, uh, created our local default method as a semen risk. So, I mean, CSP is always an option. All right, fair enough. Thanks, Jim. Hey, I, this is Dale, and I have one question. We can choose on any project which route to go. Is that correct? We're not, do we limit ourselves if we say we're going concealed center of bid for the next 18 months, two years, or can we go project by project? Something we've built a lot is kind of cookie cutter. I think the concealed competitive bid's better. Some A new project, a new high school, a design we haven't done. To me, the manager at risk is a way better option in that scenario. Can we choose back and forth yes yeah we can absolutely choose back and forth uh, but I mean uh, one of the things one of the big differences between our department and other departments at other districts is the number of staff they use uh, CSP is a lot more uh, uh, staff dependent during the mm -hmm. course of construction uh, I mean and we are by uh, all measures way understaffed relative to our CSP uh, counterparts but easy, can you give a, 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 a just do you know offhand like what's your total staff in your department? Compare that to Katie. Do you know their number? Uh, yeah, I have five and a half in my department, and if I remember, I'm I'm going from memory, but Katie has uh, I want to say like sixteen. I've got it, but it kind of makes sense too if if Mr. Rice said a building costs thirty million or forty million, whatever the number is, and Katie, we could see has eight. Katie has eight. Go ahead, Mr. Sanders. I apologize okay. there. Sorry. That's okay. I was just I was just gonna say if we can save five percent on thirty million dollars, that's a million and a half. You could pay for a staff member or two, uh, and still we would come out ahead if we continued to build a cookie cutter kind of school uh, or take the same design and just modify it slightly. It seems like we could have that done and that the concealed or the competitive sealed proposal might may work best even if we had to add a couple of staff members 
That's correct. That's yes, sir. Staff members at that million dollar savings. <laughs> I mean, exactly. And, yeah. and one of the things in the in the million dollar savings, uh, I don't I don't believe it exists. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, because there's been bids in the marketplace here recently where CSP, like Umbel ISD, for example, bid one elementary school this past year three times before they got it uh, close to where their budget was, and they still had to increase their budget to get there. When, uh, Mr. Foster, when, when would we anticipate needing to make a decision on the next elementary that's in this bond program? Like, uh, well, calendar-wise? Uh, right now, I mean, in the very, very near future, because I would have to go, uh, uh, I'm, in order to do a CSB project, we need to own the land, design it 100%, then bid it, and then build it. So our current model allows us to work with a partner, uh, create concepts, create contingencies. The land comes in the middle of all that, and we can go to, go to the marketplace on less than 100% drawings. Uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Foster, as well as Mr. Noel, so I, I have one concern relative to this. Is, are we picking vendors or, that are competitive, not competitive, that are competent in doing the CSP business? Because I've seen in the Woodlands, for instance, where they got someone to give a, a price for a, a, a roadway or whatever, and what happens is they get penalized, out, penalized and, uh, for being late, and there are certain other incentives for fin finishing early. Is that something we're doing? And then those guys sometimes get so far behind to where they walk away from the project because it's just not, it's just not worth their time to, or it's not cost benefit for them to uh, continue the project based on how far behind they've get, they've, they've gotten on these projects. So, so default risk, I guess, is what I'm more concerned about when we're dealing with someone that's going to come in, give us a fixed price, and get it done and get out. Are there penalties for being late, or are there, are there some sort of Benefit for them to be finished early. How does that work? Well, we we wouldn't have benefits for finishing early, but we all of our contracts, including cement risk, have penalties for being late. Um, we do have a liquidated damages clause in our in our contract for for that purpose. Now, uh, one of the issues with CSP uh, in is a uh, selection. So, competitive bid, uh, competitive sealed proposal. Uh, price is going to be very important otherwise we wouldn't be going to competitive seal proposal so that we would have to uh, I mean we could be uh, looking at uh, less than desirable contractors coming in with a very nice price that uh, force us to use somebody that we would normally uh, not use based on reputation or standard <coughs> One of the realities, and I think Easy mentioned it here, and, and I think it's just worth um, being aware of, is is it you know it does appear that trying this in the future makes sense at some point. We but we do need to try it on the right project, and that's I think you know uh, even uh, Mr. Hayden mentioned that at the beginning. We we do have these two elementaries that are left in the in this bond package. The next one to be built. Um, would be the one in Grand Oaks that we currently don't have land for. So that is, uh, and, and it's not for lack of trying, it's just uh, at this point, we're waiting on developers to develop land that we could actually access and use. And so um, even if this is something we may move forward with, I do uh, want to recommend that we're strategic about when we, we, we wouldn't want to sabotage our pilot, you know, by trying to force it into a, uh, a situation where it just doesn't fit. Um, you know, if perhaps the, the last elementary may be a better option if we, if we are able to acquire land for it, you know, further with more lead time from when it needs to be built. Um, this Grand Oaks Elementary, we will probably be on a short timeline um, just based on land acquisition. Is that a correct statement, Mr. Foster? Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right, any further discussion? This is just a, a, a report from internal audit about a recommendation, simply. Is that correct, Mr. Hayden? Correct. Okay. All right, any further discussion? All right. Mr. Hayden, anything else? No, uh, next is um, 
the PEAMS attendance audit that we completed. Um, you know, the, the major findings were obviously that not all the schools are in compliance with um, the TEA requirements, that the time taking was really inconsistent across all different schools. You had people taking attendance at 5 a.m. in the morning and 6 p.m. at night. So, um, you know, the recommendations were that the schools be reminded of the importance of being in compliance because we could get fined, um, that revenue stream could be impacted by a uh, failure to document, you know, the proper attendance taking steps and um, that the PEAMS office is going to, four times a year that they went out and did audits of um, different schools. Now they didn't do the data um, crunching that we did, so they are going to um, include that in their audits going forward. So they'll do the random sampling, kind of keep everybody on their toes. And, so, and this was Yes, sir. I was just going to say, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, th this was a great audit for us. It was a, a, a very good reminder. As we, we know, um, we talk to teachers, sometimes um, taking attendance becomes one of those, it's mm -hmm. just one of the things that they do as they're trying to teach school. And um, this was a great reminder of how important it was. It allowed, allowed us to quantify that importance. <clears throat> so when we, um, received this audit, we, you know, I made it a priority at the next principal's meeting to have that conversation. Once again, we quantified the amount of money that was at risk um, from these mistakes. And um, so, so we made it a priority through my conversation. And then Dr. Hines, I think, who has now joined us as a panelist, has gone a little further. I don't know, Chris, would you like to talk a little more specific about what the campuses have done uh, as well? Maybe not. I thought I saw him there, um, but just just to give some examples of of um, I'm here. I'm oh, sorry. There you go. I'm sorry. I, I, I couldn't unmute here. I'm oh, sorry. okay. Um, so to answer that, yes, we did training with the at the principals meeting, uh, really twice, to kind of review um, the standard practices and what we should be doing and uh, and correcting. We also identified where we did have problems on specific campuses. Um, working with those principals directly as well. I'll, I'll just give you a, a an example of one of the schools that I just happened to, to witness personally. Um, I was out at Grand Oaks High School one day, and they they changed their procedure based on this. That actually at a set time, I believe it was nine o'clock, but I, whatever their set attendance time was, they actually had a student that came on the announcements at that time and said, "Teachers, please take your attendance at this time." So that was a, just a structure that they put in. It was, you know, very, very well done. And, and all campuses have kind of done that, but it was nice to be able to see uh, how they implemented those suggestions on the campus level. All right, very good. Next, any other discussion? I, one right. of the things, I, uh, no, excuse me. Go ahead, Ms. Faith. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask, the format of this report was is the format that I was planning on using going forward. Do any members of the audit committee have any issues with the format that internal audits using? Does it work for you? Any any changes that you would like to see? One of the things we're trying to do in these reports as well is be more data driven, is to quantify costs, quantify risk. Uh, things like that. So I just want to make sure that's what the audit committee is looking for. Members? Works for you, it works for me. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, good. I, 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 like, I like the way you do it. We already have the report. We've read through the report. This is just put it into summary form. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully we've had our questions answered when we read the report. And this is just a good summary to remind us. So okay, sounds you. like it sounds like you've got consensus there. Okay.
I do have one question for Mr. Hayden before we depart, sure. though, if I may. Yes. Um, with changing the audit schedule, uh, in the past we have done um, kind of cursory audits of campuses with principal changes, and I know we've got several of those this year. Will those continue? Right now, no. Um, but we can if the board or if the audit committee decides that, that they feel like there's a, a risk there. Um, again, I, I'm trying, you know, I've got, as everyone does, we have limited resources. So I'm trying to funnel those resources into where um, Dr. Nall and Darren and the audit committee feel like th <coughs> there's more risk. There's, there's more dollars at risk. And that, that's where I'm trying to put the, those resources. Yeah, I know we had, I guess the purpose of doing it in the past was when a new principal came in just to, for y'all, your office to look and see if there were any glaring red flags or something right. that a new incoming principal needed to be aware of or to try to get a handle on before it became a large problem that would be caught and, and flagged as an issue on a later audit. So yeah, I would just- we can, we can certainly do those. Maybe we could circle back, Brian, and just see, you know, uh, a very cursory high level look okay. and, and that can just be kind of rolled into a potentially like a half day training or, or something with the new principal just to That's kind of walk idea. them through and, and show them. Um, because there is a, I mean, I think we all understand this. There's, um, as we go through leadership development, either collegiately or even internally, as we prepare people to be principals, the singular area that um, principals come into their new jobs unprepared to handle are the finances. It's just, there's not, they don't learn about it in college as much. And we spend a lot of time talking about instruction and leadership, but we don't spend as much time on the financial side. And so uh, I think any uh, education we can give them walking in the door is a powerful thing. Who's doing that training or some sort of high level education? Is it Mr. Rice in his shop or? Yes, sir, that, that's coming from the finance office. We actually have uh, an accountant in the finance office who, who coordinates all the activity funds. Um, and they actually provide training to the uh, campus secretaries and principals uh, on the activity funds and the activity fund software. And what I was gonna propose with Mr. Hayden is that this position can actually do some high level uh, audits for his staff and, and could bring up any any concerns that 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 position might have and report those to, to Brian and help us out in that in that aspect. You know, it's just, you know, when when there's a principal change or a secretary change, they can do those uh, you know, those medium grade audits and, and, and give the information to Mr. Hayden if they need to delve in there further. Thank you. Good job. I think that's a good idea uh, just as an operational review when we have changes to have it done at that level, that's a good internal control. And then audit can just come back and audit the internal control rather than having to go out to the campus itself. Right. I, I agree, um, Mr. Sanders, but I don't see, we're reconciling the accounts where they are. We know when that principal took over, if the audit folks wanna come in back and then kind of audit some historicals, we can do that. But just to do the transition, I don't see the need for such a robust kind of an audit process. Okay, any further discussion? All right, Mr. Hayden, anything uh, else? One last slide. We are currently uh, doing the procurement audit. Um, we're getting ready to wind it down. Uh, we should have uh, the final report to you by the end of May. And that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Any questions, no, sir? Outstanding. Thank you, Jim. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. We appreciate that. Thank you. I think we've uh, met our action items. Uh, the last item on our agenda is to confirm our next scheduled audit committee meeting. Do we have some proposed dates? I don't have the next date, Darren. Do you have the next date handy there? Let's see. Yeah, we, we don't have the, the dates in front of us with the with the uh, Okay. 
Um, but we can get those to you shortly. Normally, it would be in September. Would be there our normal next date. That first, that first Wednesday of September. That's what I was thinking. Thank you, Miss Blacklock. Uh, that's what I was thinking too. Is it would probably be the. Uh, I'm looking at w Wednesday, September the 9th, or because uh, our board meeting would be the 15th of September. I'm fine if we'd like to set that tentatively now, yes. And okay. I mean, no, with full knowledge that we have no idea what September might look like. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, but we can, uh, you okay. know. We'll set a tentative date, and then we can uh, firm it up over the summer as – more clarity is given by TEA about how long school is going to be and what that's going to look like. Yes, sir. All right. Any other discussion today? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, Baker. All right. And we have a second from Mr. Moore as well. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. We appreciate everyone's attendance today. This concludes the meeting of the Conroe ISD Audit Committee. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody.